Every state is a border state now. Our communities and cities are being overrun, and even our schools are experiencing the harmful impacts of this border crisis, which brings us to the main story for our next guest tonight. According to several news reports, public school officials in blue cities like Washington, D.C. are sounding the alarm bells right now as their, as their campuses are flooded with a new student population of illegals. They don't have the resources, they don't have the support, but even with more support, the invasion is still a big problem for schools all over the country, plain and simple. Joining us now to discuss is Michelle Exner, a senior advisor for Parents Defending Education. Michelle, thanks for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Riley. So there's a lot of talk about the border right now, and for good reason. It really is a mess, but I'm very interested in this specific angle you're taking, focusing on the school. So can you tell us some of the, the most important things and most important impacts as far as schools are being concerned and how they're dealing with this, this crisis? Absolutely. Foremost, I think it's important to note that this was a predictable problem uh, four years ago when the border crisis first started, right? In the spring of 2021. A in fact, as soon as Biden, President Biden took office, he essentially sent a message heard around the world that he was going to grant amnesty to 10 to 12 million illegal migrants. And so here we are, uh, you know, several years later, nothing has happened. Um, Secretary Mayorkas has just, has just used talking points to get past the, the these past couple years. And so, of course, it's trickled down to every sector of our society, including schools. And so what we have found through publicly FOIA and documents that we got is, is, of course, schools are a capacity, resources are being strained, and teachers are overwhelmed, okay? And and let's talk about the money. So in Massachusetts alone, there's been $584 million of the state's budget allocated to deal with the migrant crisis. In New York City, it's been $1.45 billion, I believe, just, just uh, this year. And it's expected in fiscal years 2023, 20, 24, 25, to go up to $12 billion. And in Denver as well, when we saw this, the school issue take place, is uh, $180 million. That's one tenth of the city's budget. That's not going to the taxpaying citizens, right? It's going to deal with the with the problem, a crisis that the federal government allowed to happen for the past couple of years. Exactly. And there was no plan, even though that we knew that this was coming, we could read the writing on the wall. It was a predictable and in large part a man-made problem. Now we still find ourselves in the situation. And I'm wondering, what can schools really be doing? I mean, it's class size, I imagine. It's school lunch programs. It's, it's everything. How can we just expect to bring in millions and millions of people and I don't know how many kids and just throw them into public school districts across every major city in this country, Chicago, D.C., Atlanta, L.A. So, it, I mean, how are schools dealing with this on a day-to-day -day level. I don't understand how they can even really handle any of this at all. I mean, it just blows my mind that we're even in this situation. And again, it begs the question, what have schools been doing up until this point? And what, what are they looking for in the future? I mean, how, how can they even address this crisis? Uh, they can't really mitigate the root cause of it, but I wonder what can they do with the little resources that most schools have, right? I, I just don't know. So I spent that, I spent several hours looking through and reviewing correspondence, email exchanges, documents from several school districts across the country, right? And and I'll I'll give the teachers this, right? They're just being compassionate humans that are trying to do what they can to take care of the students that have landed in their in their schools and classrooms, right? Mm -hmm. The problems are consistent throughout these school districts. It's been Teachers don't know how to deal with it, with now students who, who don't know the language, right? Um, in Springfield, Massachusetts specifically, there's one teacher who noted that she's had to find so many translators for parent-teacher conferences that it's beginning to feel like a full-time job. Um, in that, in the, in the same district, um, they had to, they asked to translate um, school resources in 17 different languages, um, just in the nation's capital, just, just, you know, just, just outside the White House here. Um, the teachers were talking about being overwhelmed. Schools are at capacity. Oh, and by the way, they were allocating nearly a million dollars to bring on new staff. And so they are being strained. And no one, every every student, migrant students and the students that, that were already at the school, American students are at a disservice. For those new staff they're bringing on, would you say, is it mostly seemingly teachers, uh, folks to help out with guidance counseling, administrative staff? Like, wh where are the schools really prioritizing their resources? I'm very curious. 
You know, I think a lot of it is for English learners, right? I mean, these classrooms are at capacity. They need to bring in extra teachers to to accommodate these these students now. And so it, it's sad, right? Mm -hmm. um, there, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars, right? Um, that that's now it's not it's not being used to recover from the learning loss of COVID, right? Because that is still a crisis in itself. No, it's now being diver diverted to a whole other crisis that the federal government made, right? They self created this crisis, and here we are. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's just it's, it's devastating. I am glad to hear that teachers are trying to stay strong and do their best because we're putting them in, an, in really an impossible situation to expect them to be able to deal with this. And again, it's just one of the things that people don't talk about enough when it comes to the border crisis. We talk about the impact on crime. We talk about the impact on infrastructure, security, but we need to talk about the fact that we don't have the schools or the capacity or the infrastructure to just deal with this kind of a massive influx, especially when it's only happened in a couple of years. Absolutely. And to be clear, more money isn't going to fix the problem, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mayorkas was just on there this Sunday talking about 1,500 migrant, you know, border crossings. That's his benchmark. I think it should be noted that uh, former secretary of DHS under President Obama, Jed Johnson, said 1,000 uh, border crossings a day. That was a crisis. So the fact that we've been at 3,000 a day, what do we call that, right? Existential threat? <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's awful. It is awful, and unfortunately we're out of time, but I would love to have you back on to talk more about this because I don't know if this problem is gonna go away or what it is, but I'd really like to hear more and just, I wanna stay tuned on it. My mom was a teacher for a very, very long time. She's an administrator now. Her mom was a teacher. My aunt's a teacher. It's It runs in the family, and it's just, it's devastating to see, uh, again, the U.S. government put teachers and really all of Americans into this impossible situation. It's, it's a ticking time bomb, and I really just, I, I like you said to, to even cap it at 1500 a day that's still 2 million people coming in illegally every single year that is untenable it's unsustainable and it's just not right it needs to stop absolutely couldn't agree more well thank you very much i really appreciate your time thank you michelle